So can you use page builder fields in the raw HTML template in BigCommerce? In this video, I'm going to go over just that. Before we get started, my name is Cal. I'm a developer, a store owner, and I run the e-commerce growth private, the free private community for store owners just like you and me. And I'll have a link below if you're interested in joining up, hanging out with other store owners. And um, I also post more e-commerce videos every week. So if you find this one helpful, if you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell. And let's go over this question, which is, can you use page builder fields? Can you use the, the, the page builder widgets in raw HTML template in big commerce? And so if you're unfamiliar with what the raw HTML template is, when you go to create a page, it asks you what kind of page that you want. Let's just create one. And it says, do you want to use the WYSIWYG? Do you want this just to be a link to the document and the navigation? Do you want this to be a contact board uh, page? Or do you want to have this be a raw HTML page, right? And the reason that people use this, and to be honest, people overlook this as an option so much. Um, but the reason that they use this is so that you can have a page that is just straight HTML, doesn't have the rest of the template built in. And this would be great for like, if you're going to do like an email campaign, you want to point them to a page that doesn't have all your header and footer, all that stuff. And, you know, you can have somebody code up an HTML page for next to nothing and just paste the code in here if you do that. So if you do that, it's just like paste the content in here. And that's it. Right. So I had this question come up. All right. Can we put page builder fields in here? Right. Uh, because that would let us use the customizer to build out landing pages, which would be super cool. So went into the code, I put in a couple of regions into the landing page template, which is this template called empty.html. I put one in here that came within the block, uh, the page block, and I put one in here that came afterwards just to see if either, either place, either location would uh, render a page builder field uh, by doing that. So let's just test this out, right? So I'm going to create this page. I'm going to call it landing page one. LP1, and I'm going to mark this as in my navigation just temporarily. And the reason for that is I know that the page builder um, system, the customizer, isn't going to let me browse to it unless I have a link to it. So by putting that in the menu for the moment, it's going to let me have a link because it's going to show up in the menu. So let's go to storefront, my themes, and go to the customizer. Going to click on preview so that I can make the LP1 link clickable. I click into it. Now you can see it doesn't show anything because there's no header or footer or anything like that on this page. So if I click back in the design tab, this confirms that those page builder regions in the empty.html template, which is what we're looking at, do not show up in the customizer, right? But Here's the thing, like I know that what you're really trying to do is you're trying to create a landing page that doesn't have the header and footer. So is there a way to do that? And the answer is, yeah. So what we could do is we could come back to this, to this page. We're going to go to storefront, web pages, click back into LP1, and we're going to change that to be a WYSIWYG page. Click save and exit, and we're going to go back to the customizer. Go to my LP1. And here we are. So we've arrived back at a page that has page builder fields. That's terrific, except it doesn't, it doesn't really meet the requirements of what we're trying to do, which is to create a landing page with no header and footer. And the reason that we don't want the header and footer a lot of times on like a campaign landing page is it gives people too many too many links out of the page where they can fall out of our funnel and we can't measure the effectiveness of it. So a lot of times direct response copywriters, direct, direct response marketers, they want you to have your just the simplest thing as possible on the uh, landing page so that you get the purest results. So by having this be a WYSIWYG page, we, we bring in the, the widget regions that we would normally have, but we still have the header and footer. So what you could do is if you put a 
body class into your template, then you can have, uh, let's see here. Let me actually, I'm going to look at this on the front end instead of being in the customizer. So I don't deal with the whole customizer iframe. So we're here on the actual website. We're going to click on the actual LP1. We're going to inspect it. And if I come up here to my body, and I know this is a little bit Cody, uh, I want to show you this even if you're not a developer so that you'll see how it can be done. And maybe you can hire somebody uh, that, that can do this for you. Maybe hire me, maybe hire somebody else and give them this video so that they can learn how to do their job. But I've put these body classes in here. And what the body class looks like is, let's see here, go to layout base.html and you can see in here if I scroll down to my body I have all these classes created in stencil code and so this says page type and it inserts the type of page that it is afterwards and then I also have one that says right here if if there is a page title which is only going to show up if this is a, a like a page page it won't show up if this is a category or whatever so if there is a page title then put in a class called page dash and then dash case dash case page dot title all right <clears throat> that shows up here on the front end as this page dash lp dash one so it took the name of this page lp dash one and it created a unique body class and because no other page on the site is named page dash or since no other page is named lp1 then no other page on the site is going to have this class of page dash lp dash one so here's what we can do is we can say okay if we don't want the header we can add a, a line of css that says on this body class page dash lp dash one for this element the header don't display it All right let me go back in here and i'll paste this into my css uh, we have a custom css uh, file in here you may not have that so you can put this in theme.scss just at the bottom always good idea to leave comments in here so this is the lp landing page so what this says is on this page take the header and then just don't display it Now, similarly, we also want to get rid of the footer. So let's find the footer class name. We're just going to scroll up here, and here it is right here. So we're going to say footer dot footer. Let's display none that as well. I'm just going to go right back to my same code. And I'm going to add it in here. So I'm going to type comma, and then footer dot footer. So this is now making this so that it'll target both the header and the footer and apply that same class to it and save and apply and if you're not cody hang on i'm going to show you another cool method right after this to do the same thing but in an easier way once you get it set up all right so i'm going to come back here to lp-1 and refresh it and you can see great it's looking really good except we still got two things on here that we don't want which is the breadcrumb so let's find the class to target that and here we go so this whole line right here actually we could probably just target this and be a little bit easier about it let me just test this and say display cats don't want to yell at my css display none all right so that's going to get rid of it so i'm going to take that same class come back in here to my css and going to do a comma and then paste that in there and again we're making sure to put this page specific class in front of everyone that we do 
so that we're not going to accidentally target other pages as well. So coming back here to the landing page, let's click on inspect for the page title. And we don't want to get rid of the whole page, but we do want to get rid of this H1 page heading. So we're going to take that H1 dot H1 dot page dash heading. And we're going to do the same to that. Paste that in there. Paste in the page targeting. And so now we're taking the header, the footer, the breadcrumbs, and the page title, the page heading on just this one page. And we're going to hide all of that stuff by setting the display to none on it. All right. Now, because I made this live in my stencil editor, if I come back here to the front end and refresh it, then you can see now that there's nothing on the page, right? So it's a blank slate. If we come in here to the, I'm going to just exit the customizer and then I'm going to come back into it. Okay. Come back into it, into customize. And I'm going to click on preview, click on LP1. Click on design. And while nothing showed up in preview, when I click in here, you can see we've we've now successfully arrived at where I think you wanted to be, which is a page where we can use page builder fields to build out whatever we want. So now I can take some of our fancy widgets from the Epic Page Builder widgets uh, app, click the masthead, drag that in there. And then we could say, we'll just take the regular Let's take, let's take the alternating banners widget, put that in there. All right. And then we could maybe take an image. Actually, let's take the layout and make this a two column layout. Oh, I sometimes it doesn't want to save this. <laughs> Okay, layout. So now it gave us the two columns. We could take, uh, let's just take a product set widget, just like this. And I'm going to add a product to it. Um, here we go. I'm going to change this to just show one. So I guess I'm deep diving here into this landing page concept. Just kind of want to show you guys like how how easy it is to build something like this with BigCommerce real quick. Then I'm going to show you one more one more way to get this and make it a little bit easier on yourself going forward. So let's put let's put this to that to make it a little bit less wide, and we'll also put in accordion over here all right and this can have some more items all right I'm gonna publish it and then we'll look at it on the front end and then I'm going to show you this other method refresh and here we go so now we have this haphazardly built landing page with accordions and a product that we can click through from um, i could have turned on the button on that widget which would have looked a little bit more landing pagey but you can see we're able to build out a landing page pretty quick um, but the drawback here is that we did have to put in custom css for this one particular page. And so if you're going to build out, you know, 10 landing pages, then you're going to have to do that, um, you know, once for every landing page that you do, which is obviously a little bit of a pain, right? Here's something else you can do. And this is going to be a little bit more Cody, but I'll show you why this is good. 
I took out that uh, line of CSS that we did. And so that's going to return our header and footer if I refresh. Yeah, it should. Sometimes it takes a minute for uh, for theme changes to apply. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we're back to this stuff. We have all that stuff built in. We have our landing page guts, but we, we have the header, the footer, the title, and the breadcrumbs again. <clears throat> all right. So the thing I'm going to show you has to be done with Stencil CLI. And so I'm going to show you how it works. And if you're not a developer, just keep in mind, I'm showing you how it works, and you can have a developer do this on your behalf. So with Stencil CLI, we can code things locally, meaning on our, uh, you know, on our local computer, on the computer that we're working on, and we can preview it before we push it live, which is pretty cool from a developer standpoint. It means we can test things out uh, before they push so they don't screw things up as opposed to just coding on your live site. So a uh, lot better coding scenario for sure. But there are some things that you can only do with Stencil CLI. And one of those things is to add more template files in BigCommerce. And that's what we're going to do in this in this situation is we're going to come in here and we're going to say within the pages folder, we're going to create a custom folder and then a custom full an additional custom folder under there called page. So under pages, we're going to create custom and then page. And then within page, we're going to create a new file. And the new file is going to be called page dash landing page dot html okay and what i'm going to do in here is i'm going to take the contents of your regular page template i'm just going to copy the whole thing right into the new template that we made All right so now it's an exact duplicate the only difference is is that this is a custom page named something else and what i'm going to do on this page is i'm going to take that code that we wrote and just to make it a little bit quick for the video, I would probably do this uh, without, I would probably do this in a slightly codier way if I wasn't just showing you guys live. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to paste this into the page as inline styling. I get rid of this. I'm going to bring this back. So I'm going to uncomment that. And I'm going to take out our page specific directions here. So what I'm ending up with is just a little bit of inline styling on this template in particular that says on this template, just go ahead and hide the header, hide the footer, hide the breadcrumbs, and hide the page heading. So how this is different from what we did previously is previously we put this into the site-wide CSS and then targeted the individual page. And what I'm doing now is I'm I'm actually just putting it in on the individual page. So this this line of CSS doesn't exist anywhere except for if you have this template applied. Right. Otherwise, this page template is going to be exactly the same. And I'm going to just click save and then I'm going to push this up into my store. And this will take a minute. You guys are getting a, a live demonstration of how Stencil CLI works. <laughs> I'll probably do a full video on that here in the future. But <clears throat> again, I know this is Cody, but I want to show you guys the benefit of doing it this way so that you guys can decide what's right for you. If you're just trying to make a, you know, a one off landing page here and there, then, you know, the method I showed you prior probably going to totally work for you. Whereas if you're going to build you know, landing page after landing page after landing page, then this method is probably going to be better for you because it's going to, it's not going to require you to, to do custom CSS every time you make one of these pages. All right, this does take just a minute. So how have you guys been? What's new? What's going on in your store? Really? All right, this is almost done. This is live, I'm not cutting it. So this is how long it actually takes to push a theme live. And it could be it could be longer on slower connections, but I have a fast connection. All right, so it's done pushing, it's applied it to the store. If I come in here, uh, I'll see 
a new version of the theme has been put in here. I didn't change the name of it, so it just added like an extra version of my current theme, but it is applied. And what we can do now is we can go to storefront, web pages, go to LP1, and everything looks the same so far, right? We're going to leave all this stuff the same. We're going to leave this the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to template layout file. And now you see a new option that wasn't there before page dash landing dash page. So when I select that, what I'm doing is I'm telling the system, apply that new custom template that I made to this particular page. Normally it's set to default, but now we're going to set it to page dash landing page and save. All right. My themes customize go to preview mode and nothing shows up here. If we click on design, everything should show up here. It does take a couple minutes for new templates to go live. More time, go to LP1. There we go. Just takes a minute or two to update sometimes. All right, so now we have this blank template, no header, no footer. Um, just start dragging stuff in, just like that. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way, as I mentioned, is that by having a little bit more upfront uh, development work, we've established a template that we can apply to lots of other pages now. So like if I'm going to just drag this in here and click publish, I'll show you guys how nice and easy this is once you get it set up. Come back here to the front end, I can see landing page one. Jeez, everything's taking a minute today, let me tell you. Let me republish it just to make sure. There it goes. All right. So getting back to what I was saying, the nice thing is here, let's go and create a second landing page. And we're going to go to web pages. LP2. We're just going to select the alternative template that we did, which is page dash landing page. Save and exit. This is marked as visible in my menu. Again, if you want to take those out of your menu, assuming that um, your menu is dynamically populating, you can just uncheck them here from the visible thing and then we'll take them out. But let's go and see the second one. Go back into my customizer. This time we're going to click on LP2. I think I've done something wrong. Let's see. So LP1 worked just fine. LP2 seems to have our header in it. <laughs> Let's see here. back and just double check that I did actually apply it, that template to LP2. Nope, didn't apply it somehow. So <laughs> everything makes sense. So come back here to template file, mark it as page dash landing page. I think maybe you can't apply the template file on your initial save. You have to come in and edit it or something. I think maybe that's why that triggered it. I'd have to test to replicate it. All right, now let's retest LP2 and make sure that it works right. I'm gonna click on preview, LP2. Sweet, blank page, got page builder fields, and like I can drag my image gallery in here if I wanted. I could drag whatever, I can drag my, man, I really love our, our uh, 
hero masthead widget. I don't know if you guys like it so much, but man, I dig it. So I'm going to click publish. Quick preview, and you can see now we got LP1, LP2, they're different, and they don't have the header footer and all that other baggage. So this is kind of the power of custom, uh, custom templates. You can make custom templates for pages, for categories, for brands, I believe, and one more thing that's escaping my brain. But for the purposes of what we're talking about in this video, you guys may want to consider having a landing page uh, custom template file put together for you so that you can do exactly like this if it's your goal to have landing pages without header and footer and all that stuff. All right, that's it for this video. I know I went way deeper than we were looking to go on the initial question, but I wanted to really thoroughly answer it and answer the spirit of the question, not just the technical uh, aspect of the question. So no, you can't use page builder fields on a raw HTML template, but you can totally make something that accomplishes the same uh, desired end goal, um, even if it's not in that exact method, if that makes sense. All right. So let's see here. What else we got? If you guys found this helpful, hit the like button and be sure to join our uh, free community of store owners, which you can find at joinecommercegrowth.com. And if you guys need a developer team that understands what I just talked about and can help you uh, accomplish all your goals, reach out to us at Epic Design Labs and we'll see if we're a good fit. And I'm always looking for new ways to help you guys out. So if you wouldn't leave me a comment, let me know what you're stuck on. And that might be my next video. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>